we're now going to move on to chapter two and we're going to move on to section 2.2. Section 2.1 is just a quick little introduction. So it's not really a section that we're going to cover, but we'll be talking about it throughout this section. Um, and section 2.2 is going to be organizing data, right? So it's very important that you know how to organize your data and present it in a way that is easy for the reader to understand and interpret. Um, and remember, in every unit, we're gonna have essential questions. This unit, we have three of them. We're gonna focus on one for right now, and it's how can we represent data more clearly? All right, so let's just say um, that a researcher decides to do a study on the age of the 50 richest people in the world. All right, so he does research, he compiles his data, and this is what it looks like. Is this easy for you to read and interpret? It's really messy, it's sloppy, there's not written in any um, form that allows for the ease, a reader um, to easily interpret or even make anything about it, make any um, inferences about this data. Like it's hard for you to even interpret what is the youngest and oldest without going through all these different rows here, all right? So when your data is in this form, this is called our raw data, our raw data, all right? Where it's um, in its original form that you may have gotten your information as, and it's not easy to read or interpret. All right, so this is our raw data. So what we're going to do in this section is we're going to organize our data and we're going to organize it into a frequency distribution uh, or a frequency distribution table. All right, so there's two different kinds and this section will be broken up into two different videos. One will be categorical and the other one will be a grouped. All right, so the first one we're going to do is categorical. But before we get into that, what a frequency distribution table looks like is this. All right, and you'll see this is much easier for us to then read and interpret. We can quickly say, well, 10, 20, 24, 27, 30. So we know 30 of the 50 people are the age 69 or younger. So that means 60% of, of the richest people in the world are 69 years old or younger. So in this form, it allows for us to quickly and easily determine um, any, uh, some, some things about our, our data, and it's much easier for us to read than it is here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do a, an example real quick of a categorical frequency distribution. Right, so if we were to do a study on 25 army inductees, and we decided let's test their blood type. So if we were to do the study, this would be our raw data. So when we're doing a categorical frequency, frequency distribution, we need to create this table. And the four columns that we need to have are class, tally, frequency, and percentage. And I'll go through each of these. The class is going to be all of the different categories that we can have. So in a categorical frequency distribution, it is where our data is nominal or qualitative. So it's not something that we can necessarily rank um, like we could with um, if it were dealing with the ages of the richest people in the world. So you see our blood types are this A, B, A, B, and O. So when we're doing a categorical frequency distribution, we need to create a row for all of the different blood types that we have. So since the different ones that we have are A, B, A, B, and O, we need to make sure that we create a class for each of those. All right, it's gonna be different in the second one that we do, but for categorical, it needs to be all of the different categories that we have or all the different um, types. Um, that we can deal with. Our tally is we're just gonna go ahead and tally up all the different ones. So we're gonna start with the first row and work our way down. So we have a blood type A, we have blood type O, blood type B, A and AB. Our second one is B, O, B, O, A. Our third one is B, B, triple O. So B, B, one, two, three. Our fourth one is A, B, A, B, A, O, B, our fifth one is O, B, O, A, B, and A. All right, and then the frequency is this, we're gonna count up all of our tallies. So we have five uh, blood type A's, we have seven blood type B's, we have four blood type A, B, and we have nine blood type O. So you can count up your frequencies pretty quickly. So five plus 12, or plus seven is 12, plus four is 16 plus nine is 25, and we know that we had 25 army inductees. All right, the percentage is going to be the frequency, so the number that we have, over top of all of our total number of um, 
data. So here we have 25 army inductees. So this will become five over 25 or 20%, right? So it was five over 25. This next one will be seven over 25, which is 28%. The next one is four over 25, which is then 16%. And the last one is nine over 25, which is then 36%. All right, so looking at these two, the, these, two, the, these two pieces of information, they're saying the same thing, but you can see in its raw data form, it's much harder for you to read and interpret than it is in this categorical frequency distribution. We can quickly say that 20% of the um, inductees were blood type A and so on, right? So it allows for us to then uh, talk about our data much easier. That's it for this video. And there's one more that we're gonna watch or that we're gonna, yeah, that you're gonna watch.